Good morning. Welcome to First Presbyterian Church. We are so glad you're joining us. Spring has sprung. It's a beautiful day out. We've uh, survived most of the weather, the uh, tornadoes and things that we dealt with, and there's a lot of uh, communities still around us who are dealing with a lot of the effects of that. So let's keep um, those affected by the flooding and the tornadoes in our prayers and thoughts this week. Um, there are friendship pads in the pews. Please feel free to uh, sign your name there. And if you are not a part of our um, email list and would like to be included in that, you feel free to put your uh, email down and we will make sure that you are included in that list. We want to thank Rodrigo Almeida for being here today. Uh, it's been several weeks since he's uh, visited with us, so we're, we're glad that he could be here today and, and hear his uh, wonderful message. We always appreciate when he joins us for worship. We also want to express uh, thanks to Kristen and Julio as well. They haven't been here in a few weeks. Uh, well, Kristen has been here for the um, orchestra and for different things, but Julio being here as well. Um, so there's a lot of announcements next Sunday the 21st, um, at 10 o'clock, we're going to have a light reception in the atrium for the Boy Scouts who are joining us. This uh, next Sunday is going to be Scout Sunday, um, and uh, there's going to be quite a few Scouts here uh, with their families, so we wanted to in invite them to a reception. You all are welcome to come and, and introduce yourselves to the Scouts, and then following worship, Come back for another reception. There's two receptions next Sunday. So next Sunday after worship, you have an insert in your bulletin. Michelle Snyder, the consultant hired by session um, to lead us through the process uh, to ultimately get to form the PNC, the past pastor nominating committee, and ultimately after that, beyond that, um, call and hire a minister. Uh, Michelle Snyder is going to be here to um, discuss uh, desires, dreams, plans for the future as a church. So there was also a reception following uh, church as well next week. So we want you to put that on your calendar and join us for that and hear everybody's voice next week about the plans for the future of FPC. Um, there's also a praise service that e evening at 530. Um, I believe Andrew Tilly is actually preaching for that. So that'll be a nice service. Um, no Logos Wednesdays, so every Wednesday in April, um, join a group of Logos volunteers at Al's Pizza um, at 5.30. Uh, I haven't made it up there yet, but I'm, I'm looking forward to one of these days making it up there to eat some pizza with the folks from Logos. Um, several other announcements, but I'll leave those to you to read, and let us now turn our hearts and minds to God as we listen to the intro. Holy Ghost, we raise to thee 
bring us to thy blissful presence. Make us all thy joys to see, then we'll sing our alleluia. Choir and Nick. That was uplifting. So basically, there's a lot of food next Sunday. I suggest you stop eating tonight. I'm going to. For like a second. All right. Um, we're going to read a call of worship together. When it's printed in bold, you may join me. I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. He drew me up from the desolate pit out of the murray bog and set my feet upon a rock making my steps secure he put a new song in my mouth a song of praise for our god many will see and fear and put their trust in the lord happy are those who make the lord their trust who do not turn to the proud to those who go astray after false gods I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. You have multiplied, O Lord my God, your wondrous deeds and your thoughts towards us. None can compare with you. The stand is sing the hymn 122, Thine is the glory. may be seated. 
comes to the part of the service that we're going to say our prayer of confession, first silently, and then we'll join to read what's printed in the bulletin. Let's bow our heads. Let's read our prayer together. We are disturbed and distressed, O oh God, by the evil that surrounds us. It is hard to view many people as we see as your children, murderers, abusers, those who cheat others and profit at their expense. We feel like victims. Why should we confess our sins where there is so many evil beyond our influence? Yet, we do not abide in your love. We sin by turning away from sisters and brothers who are also beloved by you, however they may differ from us. We seek the forgiveness you promise and the health you offer. Amen. Forgiveness of sins is proclaimed to all who repent and see new life in Christ. The peace of God dwells in us when we honestly examine ourselves, exposing our wounds to God's healing and our self-deceit to love's correction. Beloved, we are accepted by God, whose will for us is a joyous freedom in Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, as Jesus came in peace, let's go likewise to one another. The peace of Christ be with you all. Let's share the sign of peace. 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 Yeah, peace, man. May I have all the young disciples come down? She went that way. She'll be back. Harbor. Good morning, everyone. It's good to see your happy faces today. Glad you got out of bed to join me. Are there something you really, really want to do? Maybe a trip or maybe like a big gift, maybe a huge Lego set. What do you want to get? You want to go to Iceland again? Different, different. Disney, what else? That will be exciting. 
wouldn't it? All right. So I'm going to tell you a story about um, something that happened after the resurrection of Jesus. Now, which holiday did we just celebrate? Easter. Easter is a very important holiday, a very important day in the life of the church. So after Jesus resurrected, he didn't just, like, take off and leave. He actually hung around for a little while, and one day he appeared to his disciples. And guess what they said? Well, Jesus said, peace be with you, and the disciples, they all freaked out. Why do you think they freaked out? Why? They didn't think he was going to be alive after he already died and resurrected. So they probably thought he was a ghost, like, boom, peace be with you. Yeah, that would freak me out too, probably. And then Jesus said to them, why are you freaking out? No, he didn't say that, actually. He said, why do you have doubts? Touch this. So he raised his hands out. He said, touch this. Do ghosts have flesh and bones like I do? And then you know what he did? He said, give me something to eat. He sat down with them and had a meal with them, and he taught them about the forgiveness of sins and told them the good news and told them that God's promise will be delivered. Now, let's see. The disciples were really excited about all of that, and they still had trouble believing, as if if your mom comes up to you guys right now and says, we're going to Disney right after this, you'd be like, that is so great, I can't believe it. Or if Trinity's mom and dad come up and say, we're going to Iceland right after this, skip school for two weeks, and you'd be like, I can't believe it. So that's kind of how the disciples were in the story when they first saw Jesus. They couldn't believe it because they were in doubt, but then they were so overjoyed, right? So there are times in your life you may have doubt, that you may not even believe certain things, and that's okay because Jesus didn't shame them or say, oh, you guys have doubts. You're not even worthy of my love. You're not worthy of my good news. He didn't say that. He sat down, he had a meal with them, and he taught them like a good teacher about forgiveness of sins, about how God loves them, and God had delivered the promise that he gave them. Right? So let's bow our heads and pray. Thank you, for Je thank you, Jesus, for loving us, even when we have doubts, for being a good teacher. In Jesus' name, amen.
Beautiful, beautiful, great job, love it. All right. So please, uh, if you have your Bibles with you on your Pew Bible, um, we're going to start to reading the scripture today. is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24. I'm going to read from verse 36 through 48. Let's listen to the word of the Lord. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them this, his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of the Moses, the prophets, And the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day. And that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. This is the living word of the Lord. I encourage you to keep your Bible uh, at hand because I always relate to that and it's really good to have it. So before I go into the message, good morning, church. How are we doing today? Beautiful day, as uh, Nick mentioned. Uh, It's so great to have this day, you know, pleasant and be able to go outside and not worry about the storms that he mentioned. But talking about that, it was unusual this past week, wasn't it? We have a part of America here, we uh, witness some natural events that are unusual to part of uh, some regions here, most specifically here in West Virginia. So people uh, uh, on the internet are watching us from whatever place you are. Uh, First of all, welcome, but let us bring you up to date what happened here in this wonderful place, which is almost heaven. Um, We were putting alert this past week because of the tornado. Um, and the people were running up and down the streets, you know, sh- and, and, and warnings come and say, get, uh, you know, shelter, uh, and the instructions to deal with that. It was really interesting. Uh, kids were, you know, locating safe spaces in school, and for a few minutes, we could see when the elements combined can do. And also, I was looking 
through the window, we should not be doing that, but I was looking through the window and contemplating the power of God. Another unusual event happened in New Jersey when an earthquake hit that place. And that earthquake was felt in 13 states. And that event, unlike the first one, was unannounced. We didn't know that. And boom, everybody caught by surprise. And, uh, and also we saw in Taiwan, we had a really bad earthquake with some casualties. But that, that those things are announced. And lastly, on this past Monday, uh, the United States stopped to witness another God's event, which was the solar eclipse, right? And interesting enough as well, some people traveled miles and miles to witness that. Um, families were reunited, uh, schools dismissed the kids to stay with their f uh, friends and families to look to the sky. Another thing, fun, uh, interesting fact that happened is the car rent business has an increase of 600% for trips. Hotels were fully booked for that event. Because And some cities were uh, declaring a state of emergency due to the high number of people in their town. And after all these events, solar eclipse, tornado, earthquake, I opened my ears in waiting for trumpets, because that's what's written in Revelations. And I said, oh, no trumpets. Okay, good. God still loves us. I mean, he will love us when he comes back. But, uh, well, that's good. So... Keep, let's working here, sharing the gospel. So all these events that we, I just mentioned here that we witnessed this past week, some of them caught us by surprise. Others were warned. Isn't that what, how God works in our life? Isn't that he asks for us to read and to write the Bible? This book here, reveals how the mankind is living. And some people, are, are, I'm always amused for some people say, oh, this world is crazy. And I say, why? And they start to complain about the things that's going on. So why are you amused about that? And they say, are you not? And I said, no. It's all written here. Everything that God asks us to know is in the Bible. And the scripture today tells us how the disciples were warned, but then also they were caught by surprise. So when Jesus um, met then some disciples going to the road and to a mouse, remember that story? And they were talking with Jesus as just somebody that joined the walk. And then after the whole day, when they sat at the table and Jesus broke the bread, they said, oh, that was Jesus. All the time he was with us. They were surprised. And then they ran back to Jerusalem to tell the story. And guess what? Jesus showed up to them again. And they were oh, in awe. Is, are you back here? And then every time Jesus met after his death, he met saying the very first sentence, peace be with you. And as he does that, he shows his marks on his hands. As a first, when you startle to somebody, doing this move, you look at his hands. It's the closest thing to you. And that's what he's showing, first of all. And doubting about, look at their faces, they were astonished. See, and Jesus said, look at my marks, my hands, touch it. And you will believe that is me. I'm not a ghost because ghosts cannot eat. And that's what he said, what he did, ask for food. And they gave a broil, a piece of broil fish. And then he sat down and started to explain to his disciples again about the Bible, about the Torah, all the Old Testament. So, and that's how he describes, Luke describes here pretty nice, giving a hint of God. He said, I came to fulfill the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. That's the Holy Trinity. And then 
He reminds us, it is written, that the Son of Man will die and raise after three days. The Holy Trinity. Every single moment here in the Bible is so explicit. God's fingerprints, sometimes hidden. Keep your eyes open and just wonder when that comes to you. And then the top of this message here is verse 47. If you have your Bible with you at hand, it says here, And that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. So here we come with a few conclusions, church. What differs us 2,000 years after Jesus to his disciples? Why are we still in awe and perplexed about God's creation? Isn't our own lives a daily event to be celebrated? Not only God shows his amazing love for and care for us, he warned us. Through the scriptures, what is about to happen. He gave his disciples not only to tell us, but the witness of Jesus' life. And he said, he returned. And where that will happen? In the book of Revelation, written by the apostle John, chapter 21, verse 2 through 4, it says, And I saw the holy city. The new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. That is God's plan since the beginning. Since when he created the world. To live with his creation eternally. But because we sinned. Evil entered the earth and in people's hearts. In the first letter of John chapter 3 verse 8 it says. Everyone who commits sin is a child of the devil. For the devil has been sinning from the beginning but for God to live among us he needs to wipe out the evil from our lives and especially from this world and that is why he's using us we so-called Christians have a duty to proclaim this new kingdom using the holy bible as our shield and his strength to destroy the evil in this world Jesus said if you acknowledge me Among the nations, I will acknowledge you before the Father. If we are so-called Christians, we ought to walk in the light. To be in the light is to carry Jesus' name in this dark world and repeal the darkness in people's lives. It is written, the Son of God was revealed for this purpose, to destroy the works of the devil. And he gave us this commission led by the Holy Spirit. So, brothers and sisters, today I'd like to bring this here. God is preparing a new kingdom where creature and creator will live together in his glory. Unlike the phenomenon mentioned in the beginning of the message, we cannot predict Jesus' return. We can predict, yes, thunderstorms, hurricanes, tornadoes, even eclipses, solar eclipses but not his return. So watch and pray. How amazing it would be if instead of every eclipse like we had, where people were united from different places, families were together, the eyes of curiosity and in splendor were directed to the firmament. And uh, of course, using goggles in order to witness God's creation. What if we could do this every day to give all the glory to the creator we will wait 20 more years to look up as the specialists predict the next eclipse will be why not do it every day until his return if you walk in the light when he returns we will not need special goggles to look at him 
because His light will not bother us. And we won't be surprised because we carry the Bible as the Word of God. Thus, we know that this will happen. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we can witness you every day in our lives. Every day that we step out of our lives, the houses, we see you. We witness you. Please teach us to give thanks for our days on earth. And give strength to go out in this world to proclaim the goodness, the holiness of your Son, Jesus Christ. And, blame, and, and, and wipe out the devil here in this world. Use us as a tool for your goodness. Please, Lord, give us strength and hope so not our lives is not in vain. All the words that is written in the Holy Bible, we cling to it. We love you, Lord, so much. And please, guide us to eternal life with you and your Holy Son until he comes back again. Amen. This is the moment that we come to prayer. I should have just linked it with that, but with prayers in our hearts, intentions to people that need our thoughts, let's go to God and with confidence recite the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand in body or in spirit and let's sing, raise our voices, singing the hymn 155, Rejoice, the Lord is King. <laughs> be seated. Freely we receive, freely we give. As God bless us with many things, let's share the blessings to our lives, to this church.
pray for these blessings that uh, multiplied by two, three, tenfold. Bless these people, Lord, and through their hands they can produce and they can bring the glory to you by the blessing shed from you in this people's name. In Jesus we pray. Amen. One more hymn. I love this hymn. Hymn 371. Let's raise our voice to, the, to God singing, Lift High the Cross. Love the chimes. It's kind of Christmas here. All right. Go in peace now, brothers and sisters. Go into this world and remember, let's make our lives worthy. But more important, to have God and Jesus in our heart so we can carry that light in the darkness. We will not trip. There, is no, there will be no stumbling block. Just a straight path to, eternal, to eternity. So go in peace in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God be with you.